Happy Thursday, Smite fans. You are watching the SCC, the Smite Challenger Circuit, and this one is important. It is the last week, weekend, I guess, of the, the regular Phase 2 SCC matches, and we'll be getting into playoffs, all that sort of fun stuff. So all of these matches, the last time you'll see these teams before they're in those tournament events. My name is Dolson Agro. joins me for our first matchup of the day. We're over in EU here, Agro. Uh, and this has been a very contested region all phase long. These matchups match have been important, but now we're down to the wire. you got one matchup left to, to move yourself on. You might find yourself in, might find yourself out. This one's important. Absolutely, and remember that it's very important that you can get to top three or top four. If you get to top three, then you don't need to play up against a top SOC team in these wild card matches, and you get to go to land. But if you're, top four, if you're the fourth place team, then you still have that shot, but you have to beat the top SOC team. And those SOC teams have looked pretty good overall, so that is not a guaranteed yep. you know, spot in that Phase 2 circuit playoff. So very important. Remember, top three is where you want to be, but fourth place is okay as well. well. Here are your EU standings. Teams like Elysium, Joystick. Good night, Nick. You'd think would be safe, but hey, this one's really important. Look, you, you talk about wanting to qualify in. It looks like Goodnight Nick and Pandemonium will at least get a chance. But Agro, one team at 5-4, and four, the other team at 4-5, and five, and... Wouldn't you guess it? Those are the two teams we have playing on the final day of the EU SCC here. So if Pandemonium's able to grab this win, things get interesting. You're, you're tied up in uh, in win-loss record. Of course, good night, Nick. If they have it their way, they'll just get the win. And yeah. they won't have to worry about playing that SOC team. Lots of action to be had across this weekend in the SCC, though. Good night, Nick. Pandemonium start us off. Snake Hunters versus Team Joystick will be on Friday. Uh, over in EU, and then Sunday will be our final matchup. We got two NA matchups. Herculean versus the Tiburones will start things off in the NA SEC after this. Uh, we can talk about Pandemonium, though, here, Agro. Sure. A team that ha has had plenty of ups and downs uh, so far this year in the SEC. We've seen them take some games, even some sets off some of these top teams. Uh, and they've got Cherio on their team. A lot of fun to watch. Absolutely. Anytime Cherio is going to be on your team, you're going to have a good shot. And Joshi, obviously, a huge part of this team as well. I think that this is one of those teams that when they put it together, when they when they play at their best, they can absolutely compete with the Elysiums of the world. But too often we just see them have these struggles that make it difficult for them to then come back in game. So consistency, in my opinion, probably going to be a, a, a thing to focus on yep. for this team. But if they come out and, and understand how important this matchup is, I mean, it's just winner gets third seed. We got that confirmed behind the scenes for the tiebreakers and that kind of stuff. Fair the, enough. The winner gets third seed, so you get to guarantee yourself, control your own destiny, and make sure that you don't need to uh, to worry about playing against some of those top SOC teams if you can win here today. A lot easier on us in that case. You don't need you know, Gormizer back there crunching the numbers, trying to figure out which direction. Uh, well, who do you direction. think ran the numbers back there? Well, right, it was Gore who, who let us. No? No, it wasn't. No? I was, I was yes ending your bit. I know, and I was just telling you that you were wrong. So I got set up here is the way that Correct. this is working. What a fantastic yeah. way to start off this Start weekend. us off. Well, it's because you wore the same color as me, and you're going to wear it better, and so I'm offended. Does it count that I showed up to the studio first? Absolutely not. So I, you still wore it first. Correct. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I, uh, I matched aggro here today. Glad uh, we're on the same page. Glad we're on the same page. Shirts-wise, for sure. Mentally, maybe not. Uh, good night, Nick, though. This is a fun team to watch as well. Lots of... I think, um, expectations behind the team, especially when you've got a roster like Goodnight Nick have. Ice Ice, Deathwalker, Streak Up, Wolfie, and Emilzy. And this is a team that has beaten Elysium, handed Elysium their first loss here in the EU SEC. So at their best, they can play with the best. Yeah. And they have a good chance to uh, to control their own destiny, as you put it here today. Absolutely. I mean, look, th this Goodnight Nick squad ha has been really, really solid throughout this year. I think they've really improved in this phase in particular. Um, I think they've started to put together how they want to be playing the game. It is going to be uh, it is going to be Emilzy back, I believe, for this team this week. But it was Kalos last week, so I suppose we'll have to wait and see to get perfect confirmation. But either way, you're you're playing with some really good support players on your team, regardless of who's locking them. Yeah, this Goodnight Nick team 
I think it's gone through the ebbs and flows so far. We, we, we've seen some off weeks. We've seen some on weeks. And what, a, what an opportunity to kind of step up and, and put your best foot forward here in the last week, a, a meaningful matchup uh, to go up against a team that has given other teams some trouble here in the USCC. I think the jungle matchup is going to be fun to watch. It's always going to be fun yep. to watch uh, when Cherio is in there playing. Uh, but, but given the current meta, I think carries a little extra weight with it as well. You know, Cherio found the right level of competition, I think, for himself at this stage and, and having some fun, I think, in the USCC. And now he gets a meta aggro where he can carry some of these games. Hey, man, playing stuff like Bastet uh, we saw on the highlight. I'm curious to see what he's going to go towards because he has that hyper carry potential. I mean, Kali is one of his best gods. Yep. You can hyper carry on Erlong Shen, though he's a little bit more early game. But Hunbat seems to be back in the meta. That's a classic Cherio god. Excited to see what he's going to be able to pull out today. Bakasura? We I, saw hope, I hope not. Scream look good on it. In one game against the, uh, the yeah, Dragons? Yeah, I assume that if we see Baka, it won't be the Scream <laughs> Jotun's Wrath build, which yeah, uh, he, maybe not. he tried to convince me on, and it did waver me a little bit, but I still feel like uh, attack speed is probably the way. Yeah, fun, but it's not uh, – the, the odds aren't in your – you know, it's a, it's a small slice of the, the you win have to You have pie. to be Lucas Spracklin to win with that build. Right, and I'm the, not him. No, and no one is. No well, one is. Let's be very clear. <laughs> no one is Lucas Spracklin besides him. I love that guy. It was the first time I ever met him in person. He walked in wearing the aviator, sat yep. down for trivia. He was kicking it. I don't know if he won or lost, but uh, he lost, I believe. I, I think believe. yeah, it was the aviators. He couldn't couldn't uh, hear the questions with those on. I'm right. Not sure. Yeah, yeah, you got it. They're squeezing his head. Uh, <laughs> we'll catch up with the picks and bands here. Odin and RDO aggro. Those have uh, those have been kind of mainstay bands here up to this point. Yep. Very rare we see that change. Um, maybe sometimes you get a a player on the enemy team who requires a specific ban in the first three, and then you'll see something like the Odio, the Odio, the, OD, the Odin, oh my goodness, where the RDO make it through, uh, but that's not going to be here. And then the Cerberus also gets banned out, seeing a lot of high priority solo lane picks taken off the board. A lot of front line as well, I yeah. mean, it's not just solo lane, but this Geb and the Fafnir, oh, yeah, so you, you've got plenty of front line taken off the board, and interesting that it's Loki first overall, this is a pick that uh, that we I believe Ice Ice has mm -hmm. in the pocket, but clearly a pick that other junglers in the EU SEC value overall, and so that this this region has its own meta as does NASCC as does the SPL you know these teams that play against one another you kind of develop your own strategies and it seems like Loki's near the top of the prioritization list here just based on this first pick. And it's Hindu man's worst nightmare where Geb is now I guess in, in first pick ban priority he loves this pick and I remember we were talking to him and he said when, when when the Geb changes came in his biggest fear was that the eyes of the dev team would start to get pointed towards this pick as maybe needing some changes so uh, unfortunate that Geb is seeing the priority, at least for Hindu man, uh, that he has been. Cthulhu and Tiamat, talk about control uh, locked in for good night, Nick. Here, Cthulhu has seen a lot of play out of the soul lane, or, or a rising level of play at least, uh, and then Tiamat is Tiamat. And so a good start now for good night, Nick. Answered with Kepriagra, who has still been in that high tier of uh, support picks for a lot of the players we've seen. Very similar to what you're going to see Geb do and Sylvanas do. These are backline oriented supports that seem to be starting to take over the meta, which makes sense because with Assassins being good again and being able to actually put pressure on these ADCs and on these mid laners, then you need a support that can be in the back and peel for them. Mm -hmm. and so that's why Geb, you know, not just the changes, I think the meta has kind of swung his way at the exact same time. And with Fafnir and, Ke and Geb taken off the board. Fafnir a little bit more aggressive. Going to the Kepri makes some sense, but good night, Nick, doing the same thing. You know, backline oriented support yep. here with the Sylvanas. Now I thought I thought Sylvanas was gonna be like a like an inbound one off, like yeah. a couple of the guys at the SPL level really good at this pick. We're starting to see it a lot a lot more though. I mean the, the, the style of play, I think Neoma played it wasn't his best look, but <laughs> showing that more support. It, it, it was it was played in that game. Correct. That's all we'll say. And that's all we'll say about that one. Uh, but Sylvanas starting to rise on up a little bit. A lot of fun to watch. Some pulls, uh, you know, can change the face of these team fights. Help set them up. Yep. Uh, we'll catch back up with the second wave of Banzo. Hercules and Kabrakin first, or second two, in there uh, in the band phase here for Good Night Nick. I mean, front line across the board for, for Good Night Nick here. They've got a, uh, a very specific set of characters they do not want to play against on the enemy front line. No, I think that that makes some sense. I mean, you, they've got such a good basis here for what they need to do with this game. I mean, they've got really good front line now with the Cthulhu and the Sylvanas, so you've got a front line oriented support or guardian in the Cthulhu who's going to be able to dive the enemy back line. 
and then you've got protection on your own back line for the Sylvanas to make this Loki for Cherio much harder to execute and actually kill your Tiamat and your ADC whenever that gets locked in. So I think the Good Knight Nick have already insulated themselves pretty well. I would like a little bit more CC for them. Sylvanas definitely not the most guaranteed CC in the world, and Hoi is a great start. More AoE team mm -hmm. fight presence and a stun to boot. Yeah, you know, Hoi's been been seeing more play. Uller wondered where we would see the uh, the Ul priority go. If that's open in the in the second wave of picks here, you have to imagine one of these two teams is picking at the the just rise in play and the the control and the damage that Ul's been able to provide. Uh, I don't think you can gloss over. And Pandemonium seem to agree they'll take that one away, and that leaves Sobek plus Jingwei. Uh, for uh, one duo lane, and then Sobek, of course, will be over in that solo lane. Jingwei, though, given the current meta aggro, we've seen a lot of the, the Mace Tree, ability-based style hunters really coming to the forefront. Uh, Crusher, kind of regardless, is, is one of those popular first items, gets you some of that attack speed. Uh, where do you think Jingwei slots in? I don't think she's at her best right now. I'd say that among Jingwei's competitive history, where she's been very successful, she's probably on the weaker end now than she has been historically. But I, she still works because agility is such a crazy ability. I mean, you see knockups on the other team. You're going to be able to, to jump out of the of the Sylvanas ultimate really yep. easily. Give yourself that extra room. Has good follow-up CC off of Capri and off of Sobek. I think she's totally fine. I don't think the, the meta build is super good for her right now. I don't think she really needs that extra pen a lot. Right. She wants to be building crit the vast majority of the time. But... We'll see what direction Joshi wants to go. I mean, this is a pick that he's very comfortable on in his career. So certainly not unpickable and unwinnable. Right. But don't think she's near the top of the Hunter tier list. I'd argue we, we've seen some flexibility, right, in, in Hunter builds yeah. where the, there's kind of a standard way of things going. But we've seen some diversion from that standard. Pandemonium versus Goodnight Nick. Game number one for all the marbles. Pandemonium and Goodnight Nick fighting for that third place spot here. Both teams will qualify, but one of the two teams, the loser of this set, will have to play an SOC team to further qualify for the LAN event. So, I then, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it because we were talking about Jing Wei, look towards the jungle matchup again. I mentioned Cherio and how fun it is to watch him. Ice Ice as well has looked good for this good night Nick team. Um, we've got a Thor versus a Loki matchup here, Agro. Yeah, that's some lore implications. There are right some there. lore. That's right. The, the the brothers will be battling it out here in game one. And I'm always excited to see Thor. Um, hasn't been the jungle favorite just yet in, no. the, uh, in the recent meta, that said. No, I, I agree. I mean, Thor, super dynamic. And you'd think with all these maces coming back, like he works so well with every single one of them that mm -hmm. you got to think, you know, Heartseeker's back. You're like, all right, time for Thor to really shine. And he just has it. Um, it, and it kind of surprises me, but then you, you play him, and for whatever reason, he just seems to be a little bit weaker than, than a lot of other assassins that you have. And it couldn't be to you, deal. right? I mean, and we both know it is not me. Thank you for <laughs> clarifying. No, I, I just think that he's that he's a little bit weaker on the base kit than a lot of other assassins right now. But with the build being so favorable to him, and you having so much playmaking potential, he still does. He still pushes leads better than most assassins. Well, Ice Ice, then, you, you look towards that level 5 pivot point when the Envil of Dawn comes online, uh, and you can impact a lot of these lanes. Pull from Emilzy would have made things interesting here, but Shoxy Foxy able to back away. Streak Up actually takes the brunt of most of the damage here, and so that'll send Streak Up right on back. So Ho Yi versus, uh, versus Jing Wei. Could be some action in that lane, but then you got a Sylvanas and a, and a Kepri on either side. Jingwei plenty safe. Uh, might require some jungle pressure, Agro, to get some some kills on board. Although uh, a, a pull from Amusey can make things interesting at the drop of a hat. Nearly found that one. Just splits the uprights a bit between Shoxy Foxy and a Whoa. Tori. But that double bounce certainly was a bit spooky there for Shoxy Foxy, who has plenty of health potions, but burning through them pretty quickly. This is what you expect out of the Sylvanas Slane. I mean, this is what makes... One of the things that makes this god so strong right now is that he nearly guarantees you lane pressure. He just has AoE auto attacks. That's very difficult for e enemy teams to contest with. And then whenever he gets that Lotus Crown finished, assuming that that's the direction that Emilzy will go after Gauntlet of Thebes, a little surprised that he's actually going Thebes first. Yeah, normally it's Lotus. Lo normally it's Lotus first. You get so many prots from Wisps because they provide protections already. Whenever you heal someone, they get protections. They get healing. And then they get more protections from Lotus Crown, and it makes your backline feel impossible to kill for, for Assassin, especially early. Yeah, that's hefty. And so, you expect, uh, when I when I bring up kill pressure, it might be on one side of this lane. Purple Buff is going to spawn here, and that's where I think it'll be interesting to see how Goodnight Nick 
respond or, or, or chooses to be active with the pressure that they've got on the left side here and how Pandemonium want to reply because with this level of pressure you imagine a Mulesian streak up can do a little bit of this we'll rotate onto the right Look for the junglers though, it's Goodnight Nick. Ice Ice, that's rotating over here to the purple buff. On the other side of the map is Cherio. So this will be a clean and easy purple buff invade for Goodnight Nick. Love the rotation over from Ice Ice, just making sure that that invade is going to go successfully, but think that Pandemonium make the right call, that they don't want to contest that, even if Cherio were to rotate over. Sylvanas Ho Yi just so much better at scrapping at this point in the game than something like Kepri Jingwei. This is not Loki's strong point in the game either. He doesn't bring that same CC level that, that even someone like Ice Ice will on this Thor. Wolfie and Ice Ice will rotate in back into mid lane. Joshi's reached level 5 here. And so the Tycho drums there. That'll keep him a little bit safer if you're able to read out that Anvil of Dawn from Ice Ice Thunder Crash as well. We'll keep Raijin uh, plenty safe. But very difficult to read those Thor, uh, those Thor ultimates from time to time. Uh, where do you... Okay, so this is totally... Uh, off kilter for the the game itself right now. Uh huh. Are we ever gonna see like a like a ring build Sylvanas? I mean AOE autos. I mean that's just got to. I mean you just slinging out mm -hmm. auto attacks with all the rings, right? Um yeah every, I can. I'm down to queue I up. I'm down to queue up tonight and run that for you. Yeah. Yeah I'll do it. Not not in these games though. No. No of course not. <laughs> I just mean is there a world where that's yeah. like? <laughs> oh of course mannequin Sylvanas. You yeah. you get your demonic grip. You get your Telkines. You, here's the key thing about damage Sylvanas. You need Spear of the Magus. I don't care what anyone says. It's so good on the character. You're, you're, you're all dot based. Yeah. You that's want true. that percent damage increase. You want that flat pen. Uh, you want Rod of Tahuti for the same reason because you're so dot based. Um, damage Sylvanas can absolutely See, slam. His, his ultimate scales higher than Kraken and you're has kidding. more damage scaling. You're kidding. I'm not. I don't know. There, there's something when, when a character has like unique auto attack kit. Yeah, uh, bases like like Emilzi does or like Sylvanas does. I'm always, you know, I always like thinking about building it, building a, a build around the auto attacking. Uh, Ice Ice has been plenty active in the first few minutes of this game. You help out with a purple buff invade just a moment ago. Now you rotate behind. As we take a quick pause, it'll look like a successful red buff invade from this uh, from this store as well. Yep. And so Ice Ice not active as far as ganks go with that anvil of dawn, realizing his time may be better spent getting pressure on the left side of the map. He's been super active, and you'd love to see that from the Thor, especially before he even gets the opportunity to, oh, took red to impact one of the side lanes with that ultimate. But now he's got Jotun's <laughs> Wrath, so he can start letting them loose with, with Reckless Abandon because he already has 20% CDR less than five minutes into the game. Well, there you go. An answer back from Pandemonium. That, that's what you got to see. You know that, that Ice Ice is on your side of the map. Dunking down on the red buff, that is not there. Cherio between the tier 1 and tier 2 towers here, so he's in behind. Amuse looking nice. for the pull on a Joshi, but it's the immediate Tycho drums out of the Raijin to keep him safe. So the rotation in won't be there, and Cherio looks like he'll get out successfully. Some pings dropping down, so... Good night, Nick. Know that Cherio is somewhere over here. Deathwalker and Amuse are going to rotate in. But uh, the ever-slippery Loki should be oh. able to walk out. Oh, no, but Amuse gets the pull! It's the assassinate out from Cheerio, and Ice Ice has got the range. Good night, Nick. It found first blood, and Cheerio won't get out alive. But Mielzy with back-to-back -back really sick pulls. A blink pull onto Joshi, forced the Tycho drums, because it would have landed 100%. And then that pull onto Cheerio guarantees first blood for Good Night Nick. And the best news is you got assassinate and purification beads for it at the exact same time. So really good response by Good Night Nick. And... That's what invading will do for you. You just force the enemy team to make mistakes. They just overextend trying to get your red buff down, and Cherio doesn't walk out the same direction as Josh. He tries to get a little cute and steal away too much of the jungle from Goodnight Nick and gets really punished for it. And that's a great start for Goodnight Nick. Now that, that first blood bounty, really the difference here in game one as far as gold goes. And it's what you're able to do with that little bit of a lead for Ice Ice. We, we saw him plenty active around the left side of the map. It's that next rotation through where Pandemonium might be able to respond a little bit quicker if Ice Ice ends up going there, which it looks like he will as Red Buff is about to come back up. Amelie and Wolfie here, though, as well. So good night, Nick. Showing in force around this Red Buff. Around the back is Joshi. That's out of maybe a steal away attempt. Won't be there for Pandemonium. And good night, Nick. Get another red. Look at Cherio's flank. He's going the long way around to try and influence this fight, but it's going to be too long a way around because it's going to be another oh, successful Wolfie. Collapsed on in the mid lane. 
This is what, what you can't do if your team is rotating into the enemy jungle. You gotta stay alive. Ice Ice, Anvil of Dawn, dunks in, finds a lot of damage here. Cherio on his way out. Remember, no purification beads. There is a Scarab's Blessing. How patient can you be here if you're Death Walker? Just a moment's time. The Scarab's Blessing times off and streak up. We'll answer back a kill. Look, it's a mistake by Wolfie for sure to get to, to pull those left side or be around those left side mids and just be an option for Pandemonium to attack. But good night, Nick, with a swift response. Come on back very quickly using that Anvil of Dawn again. Yatori hasn't gotten a purple since the very start of the game. Good beads from Joshi and a lot of damage out of Ice Ice. Emilzi had walked in, used the ultimate. Gotten the beads out of the mid laner. How about this? An airstrike away from Atori, but streak up on the chase in. Auto attack one, no good. And it looks like Atori will walk away. So both hunters use their uh, use their ultimates there. 188 HP, 187 more than you need to stay alive. And streak up won't even get the beads there. A bit of a different start for both of the hunters here. I grow maybe Crusher a bit more standard from what we've seen, but Transcendence to start off for this Jingwei. Yeah, Transcendence Jingwei, I mean, I, I just don't think this character leverages the scaling you get from this item super well. That's that, that's the whole reason to be going Transcendence, right, is that you've got uh, abilities that you want the CDR for, which every character in the entire game would love some CDR, but some utilize it better than others. Jingwei, getting more agility, getting more explosive bolts probably feels fine. You know, that, that, that's not the end of the world. But I think you also want Transcendence on gods that actually leverage the higher power that you get from this item as opposed to something like Ikaval right up front sure. or Devourer's Gauntlets. I mean, th these things that bring you a little bit more utility in your build. And, and I just don't think Jingwei uses that super well. So personally, not a huge fan of the Transcendence. So we will see for Atori how the rest of this build ends up looking. Ice Ice not around the red buff this time. Pandemonium Ooh. able to secure it away. And back to the purple buff, we'll go Pandemonium. So just playing a little bit uh, safer this time, maybe around their buffs. Cherio will help protect the red and purple buffs for Pandemonium this time. Look, I, Goodnight Nick did a great job uh, in putting pressure on Pandemonium in their jungle. But it didn't amount to as much as they probably would have liked. But always prefer teams to try and force the enemy team to make mistakes through the early stages. And they got a couple of little bounties for it. You know, even though you don't get that last rotation, doesn't mean you can't just go back for the next one. Mule Z, Ice Ice, and Wolfie now group up in the mid lane. Was the ultimate out of Death Walker on the right side of the map. Was looking towards the blue buff, but Captain Odie was able to get that one. And so that's the uh, maybe the next big pivot point here in this game. We've seen a couple of assists out of Death Walker so far over on the right side of the map, and then some killing that happened there in mid. It's going to be the uh, the relative impact. As Cherio might find his way in behind Streak Up here. Streak Up does have beads. But the two versus one, I mean, you gotta favor the team with two. In a moment like this, Cherio walks into lane here, gets some damage on a Streak Up who will leap away. And you know, Cherio will not use his ultimate. And a gank though is not to be, and Cherio will walk on out empty handed. A little surprised that Cherio doesn't use the ultimate at the very least there to, to force beads out from Streak Up, but. Yep. Probably because they didn't have good tracking on where Ice Ice was, if I had to guess. Oh, mid lane scrap now as well. The 1v1 goes away of Joshi. But now it's a return dunk from Ice Ice, who's got a lot of damage. But Scarab's Blessing, perfect wall, no good on the stun. And Shoxy Foxy here on defense. That has got to be one of the most aggravating things in the world. You deal 99.99% of the damage, but it's that last tick. That procs that Scarab's Blessing and Shoxy Foxy able to save the life of his mid laner. Really well played by Shoxy and of course by Joshi to go 1v1 up against Wolfie who, who is starting to fall pretty far behind. I mean these invades put Ice Ice ahead of Cherio, put Emilzy very far ahead of Shoxy and that was really where, and of course Streak up ahead of Itori. Those were the, the big leads that were generated even though they weren't huge leads, they were noticeable ones. But now you're going to start to see a noticeable difference in mid because Joshi has killed Wolfie twice now, once with help, once without. Yep. And that's going to lead to a, to a pretty significant itemization and, and XP advantage, I'd imagine, for, for Joshi in this mid lane. Well, Joshi went with a bit of a different build. You get some flat pen and anti-heal online early with that Divine Ruin, a little extra Love burst it. as a soul gem is completed on the other side. And a bit more standard in a rotation from Wolfie here, and we'll get to talk on that in a moment after we see if Goodnight Nick are able to cleanly take this Gold Fury, and it looks like the answer is yes, unless Cherio's got something to say about it. He does not. His lips are sealed, and Goodnight Nick will take down the Gold Fury and bring up that lead a little bit further. This is exactly what I love to see from teams, that, that you know, an unfortunate circumstance befells them, that 
they end up losing, uh, they, they lose a kill in mid, their mid laner gets soloed, and they don't sit around on their hands and go, oh, well, we can't play aggressively anymore. They, they group up and they go straight back to the Gold Fury. And Goodnight Nick has been so active on this map. It, it, it's been a, a stark <laughs> difference from, from earlier in the year. Ice Ice was just taking down the green buff. Now he gets jumped on by Cherio, who uses Assassinate onto Wolf. He has Cherio done too much. Beads are out. So is Scarab's Blessing. And patience, again, is a virtue under the Tier 2 Tower. Oh, Scarab's Blessing does not time out, and Cherio stays alive. And I respect the attempt there from Cherio. See if you can get a fadeaway kill at least. And well played from Pandemonium to keep everyone on the map. Ice Ice and Cherio both low. Make sure that you... Pop it as well with the damage from the tier two. Yeah, Goodnight right. Nick was was very uh, was was towing that line nicely on not killing him, but he heads on over to the tier two, sacrifices himself to the tower gods, and makes sure that he gets revived by Shoxy Foxy. Good good aggressive play from Cherio, knowing that Ice Ice had just used all of his abilities to clear the buffs, but just a little bit short of the damage check. Wolfie a little tanky, a little healthy maybe is the word here in the mid lane. Will take some damage but not all that much. mulesy has got a two-level lead, though, over Shoxy Foxy, and so that's a, a decent size difference here in this game. He'll be able to go back, pick up that second relic, and he hit that big power spike you talked about, Aggro, that Lotus Crown now there for Amilzy. Might be why uh, might be why Wolfie felt a little extra tanky there in that engage. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, th that, that combo of Wisps plus Lotus Crown is is really, really strong. Definitely a huge part of, of Sylvanas' strength overall. This is this is probably where Emil Z is going to feel the strongest throughout this game is right now because he's level 12, gets a second relic, has uh, has the Lotus Crown, he's got some points in the ultimate. You, you're going to still deal some relevant damage, not as much as you did in the early game, but some relevant damage, especially with your ult. Um, but you're also going to be, be providing a ton of tank yep. to the your teammates. Joshi slowed here as Ice Ice Emilzy joined the mid lane scrap. Wolfie was able to go back and complete that soul gem, so a decent little power spike now for some of that extra burst damage out of this TM match. Joshi had already been there. Looks like Soul Reaver next. This has kind of been the uh, the standard trend, isn't it, in the, the mid lane? Chronos Pendant, Soul Gem, Soul Reaver, Obshard, you know, some, some order of those four. Yep. Uh, usually up, up front is, is what we started to see in this meta. Yeah, very, very common to see this type of build path. It does mean that your, you know, your pen is delayed pretty heavily, uh, your, at least your percent pen, but that's why I really like Joshi going for a flat pen item early. think that right now maybe Soul Gem doesn't feel, you know, it took a couple nerfs, doesn't feel nearly as good as it used to. Still surprised that we see it picked up nearly every single game in the mid lane, but... It's just an item that, that feels good. That just feels good to use. Well, Cherio is back on the left side of the map. Last time Streak Up was able to walk away without having to use the beads. What do we got here? Up and over for Streak Up. And yet again, he will waltz on away without having to use any of those actives. But half HP, and you know Cherio somewhere on this side of the map. you got to play a little extra careful, uh, especially when you're unsure of where that Loki is. So he's gone. Him being Streak Up has gone Crusher, Aussie, and then looks like a little bit of crit on the back end. On the other side, aggro, Transcendence, Aussie, and then looks like a little bit of crit on the back end. So we might see mirrored uh, ADC builds here outside of uh, those first items. Pyromancer pulled from Goodnight Nick, but Pandemonium are here. Wall is out. Goodnight Nick will take down the Pyro. There's a pull on a Captain Odie on the back end there from Ice Ice. But Captain Odie able to get out cleanly, and Goodnight Nick find another neutral objective. They've been mu the much more aggressive team through the first 16 minutes of this game, and it really has not been close. Now there's an engagement in the mid lane. Tycho drums from Joshi. Will fear nice away ball. a couple of the mid, but Ice Ice inch perfect on the wall there. And Shoxy Foxy with another Scarab's Blessing that meets its mark. And so Joshi survives. Cherio stunned, damaged, assassinates away. And Streak Up will return the favor a bit. Cherio's been making life interesting for Streak Up. Cherio's going to go back to base to that Ice Ice trying to call him on it. I mean, that, th this feels like it could easily be like a 5-2 game in the kill department. Shoxy Foxy's been really on point with those Scarab's Blessings. Yeah, absolutely. Been a huge part of keeping Pandemonium up in this game. But they've got to find a way to be the aggressors at some point. They've I been mean, on the back foot. Th they've been on the back foot since minute one. 
of this game with the dual lane pressure that Good Knight Nick had. They played around that very well. And maybe whenever we get to the team fighting phase, we can see that. Where is Ice Ice going here? He's up. Probably for Josh. In the Anvil of Dawn. He'll rotate back in. Yeah, good call. <laughs> oh my god. He is gone and no Scarab's blessing this time for Shoxy Foxy. That is just way too much damage to deal with and a good read from Ice Ice on his way back in from Harpies. Joshi gets taken down for the first time this game. No beads from earlier. Easy kill there for Ice Ice Baby. And this should open up a pretty guaranteed Primal Fury. I do not think anyone from Pandemonium Energy. is going to top that full name? in this ring. What's that? Is it Ice Ice Baby? It sure is. That's is Ice it really? So you just go, it's Ice Ice in game. But I forget that you're, uh, you're new around yeah, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a new head. Dave. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Ice Ice Baby. I take it at face the, value. Uh, was the, uh, There's a was lesson the for name. all you players out there. What's on my screen is I'm Ron Burgundy of calling player <laughs> names. If it's on my screen, I'm Ice Ice it. Baby. Yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> th that's what it is. That's funny. I don't even I didn't even realize that he took it out. Really. Oh, a Tori dueling out with streak up here. Airstrike doesn't get the damage, but it looks like we'll successfully keep a Tori out of the fight. We've seen streak up get aggressive with that ultimate the last couple of times. It's hit some good damage. Now he's gonna dive on in. Knock up was there from a Tori just to force the pathing out of streak up. That's good. You take the, the, the Primal Fury. Let's put some pressure on left and make the Hunter go back. I mean, that's beads down for Tori, the, the heavenly agility for Shoxy Foxy. That's tough to have to deal with now. And, and overall, Pandemonium would seem to be on pretty different pages on that last play because Tori doesn't land the airstrike damage and then realizes that this fight is not going well for them. So he yep. starts to escape, and then Shoxy Foxy steps up and tries to abduct and instantly has to use What it. happens to Ice Ice here? Assassinate in from Cherio. Beads used, and so that is a positive trade from Pandemonium. So often this game we've seen Goodnight Nick being the ones who are finding those little engagements, taking the beads, taking the ultimates, things like that. Hell, we just saw that happen to Atori on the left. Now you get a, a, a small win, a small micro win here in this game if you're Pandemonium. Beads off of Ice Ice for the next uh, 135 seconds. So it's about capitalizing on that. In, uh, in future engagements over the next couple minutes. Got to gotta assume that Itori, or Captain Odie is going to have to make a big impact when it comes to the team fights. Yeah, right. Shoxy uh, didn't get the memo. Maybe the Deathwalker was behind. Oh, Deathwalker uses Thorns and his ultimate Tycho drums out of Joshi. We are tier two sieging now. Cherio back in the mid lane. Ice Ice around the back here. Let plenty of damage into this tier two tower. Mulesy the one tanking it up. Pulled in is Shoxy Foxy. And an easy rotation through gets both of the towers up in the air. Where's the Anvil of Dawn land? Can you find the stuns? No, but you can find yourself in the back. A Tori airstrikes on away. A double stun. Wow. Massive wall from Ice Ice. And the damage pours through from Goodnight Nick. No kills just yet. A Scarab's Blessing still there. But Shoxy Foxy uses it on himself. And somehow Pandemonium survives. Man, Ice Ice didn't land the ult, but had a massive wall hammer combo. As a Tori go. just got chunked by good night Nick and that might just be the mid Phoenix mid Phoenix looked at I mean this is a, uh, a a swift siege from good night Nick you walk up to tier one you walk into tier two and you get the mid lane Phoenix will it be for free that's the question everyone around half HP you've got some sustain from a Mulesy but you're gonna need a little bit more everyone from pandemonium to be able to go back reset spend up some of that extra gold Cherio does not have his ultimate and so it looks Looks like the escape will be complete, and Goodnight Nick get a massive push here in this game. Two towers and a phoenix. Man, they, they've just controlled every single engagement. Pandemonium just has not been able to, to – that was their first full five-on-five, five, but it didn't really start that evenly because Atori didn't have beads. You, the, the ultimate had to be used defensively there from Shoxy Foxy. Goodnight Nick was able to create a lot of space. Joshi's Tycho Drums was down before it was a full five-on-five. All of those things made it a lot harder for Pandemonium to come back in a fight that they were already not very favored in based on the game state. Oh, big pull from Emilzy, but a Shoxy Foxy, and so that's going to be a tanky target, a difficult target to take down. No take shot. Drums. Tons and Emilzy, uh, and he just kind of shrugs that one off. A big change of pace here in this nice game, swear. as uh, Captain Odie does get rooted in place by Emilzy there. Big change of pace here, Agro, is for... A long time, it felt like the saving grace for Pandemonium was the level lead there in mid from Joshi. Ultimate used by Streak Up. Cherio should get out of this one, and he will. Uh, but that level lead is gone in mid. In fact, it's a two-level lead for Wolfie. The, the tides yep. have changed in mid. Entirely. I mean, th this game has, is just all is all good night, Nick, right now. Cherio doesn't have beads, so if that wall would have landed, Ice Ice could have got in with the full commit, but decides against it. Goodnight Nick just look like a different team this week. I mean, I cast their game last week uh, up against Team Joystick, 
and no and no disrespect to Kalas whatsoever. I mean, ha has had a great career and is definitely a great player. But the difference in me mentality from Goodnight Nick, you know, I don't know if it's all Emilzy. Um, it probably isn't. But clearly, there this is a team that is playing with a lot more confidence yep. this week and being a lot more aggressive on the map. And whatever that reason is, hold on to it because because it makes a huge difference for this team. Well, I mean, it's the week you have to do it. It's a uh, it's a yep. game you need to win so you can avoid having to play an SOC team. Captain Odie's going to get collapsed on here. He'll dash away after using the beads. That's a, uh, a hefty commit, though. You have to have that relic down. Now it's going to be lurking in the uh, yeah lurking in the waters, getting used by Captain Odie if he finds himself in an engagement that he hasn't necessarily thrilled about. And so a, a good value there for Good Night Nick to collapse in. You get the Pyromancer as well. We've also been able to go back and reset, so we're feeling extra confident around this Fire Giant. Four members on the FG. Deathwalker around the back. Captain Odie, half HP, Anvil of Dawn. Is up from Ice Ice. Cherio over to the left. Deathwalker controlling the back line. Emil Z will help out Wolfie with a kill around the FG. Ice Ice is dunked down onto a Tori, but Deathwalker continues to wreak havoc. Everything defensive gets used out of a Tori, and the Hunter cannot participate in this fight. Shoxy Foxy sends a Scarab's Blessing Cherio's way, but I'd rather had it himself. And Cherio will walk on off. Two kills for Goodnight Nick, and they'll head back for the FG. A parting gift from Shoxy Foxy. Here, Cherry, take some movement speed Good, in goodbye, order to get friend. away. Because I won't be needing it much longer. Goodnight Nick just dominating in these engagements. They, they, they pull in Captain Odie, the Miozzi with another big play in order to set up that easy kill onto the Sobek. That makes the, the, the fight so much easier because Captain Odie hasn't done much of anything in these engagements because he just hasn't been given an opportunity to do so. It's, it's been so clean from Goodnight Nick. And once they separate that Sobek, Ice Ice puts pressure on the back line, kind of leaves Shoxy Foxy in this no man's land in the middle where he didn't save the Sobek and he can't save the back line. And it, it's just been impressive from Goodnight Nick. Yeah, the, uh, the Thor has seen some good, some bad over recent weeks. Not every Anvil of Dawn has been perfect from Ice Ice as far as the stun goes, but positioning wise has created chaos in these team fights. And so good night, Nick. 7.2k ahead. They've got a mid lane Phoenix that has now respawned. You've got a right side Phoenix that is exposed and you got two tier two towers on left. So good night, Nick have absolutely laid the groundwork here and it's time for the Phoenix defense of Pandemonium to step up big to avoid going down early in the set against what seems like a refocused Goodnight Nick team. Yeah, I think that you've got pretty decent wave clear here for Pandemonium at the very least. I mean, Raijin, very good, but has to be fairly close in order to do it, so that doesn't feel great. You've got Loki with the, with those, uh, with the two. That, that, that helps clear the wave a lot and is very annoying on the Siege because if you get hit by it enough, it gives that damage reduction and makes it harder. You know, you should really just be putting this on top of the ADC if you can, and, and making sure that his autos are going to deal less to the Phoenix. So you've got tools here if you're Pandemonium. Heartseeker's done for Cherio, so that means that he's gonna his poke with the two is going to be a little bit more yep. significant as well. Ice Ice has finished his Titan's Bane. This is his most recent item. Josh, he just went back. Fly up an Ob Shard. But penetration options being finished up at this point in the game. Abduct onto Deathwalker, who will dash away. Thorns are there as well as the ultimate. Big Whoa. stun on the back, but my goodness, Cherio is deleted. Ice Ice up in the air, and the dunk target is missed, but he's maybe positioned himself in a great spot, but he takes a whole lot of damage. Streak up is there to follow up, though. The ultimate strikes for two. Shoxy Foxy could be three. Wolfie's on the killing spree, and good night, Nick. Not without a little bit of sweat on their brow. Able to get a big team fight win here and maybe take the game. Look, last week we figured it out, Dave, that Nick was good. That, that good night, Nick was Nick because they lost and it was it was bedtime for right. them. But it seems like this week it's actually Pandemonium who is Nick because it will be good night for them soon. At least in game one, right? Game I mean, one, yeah. <laughs> Pandemonium could turn things around in game two, but it does look like good night for game number one here, Captain Odie and Cherio alone for the next 20 seconds or so. Ice Ice off the map, and so maybe you slow play this one just a little bit if you're good night, Nick. Maybe one more back and reset before no. you siege up this base. Agro, you're not a fan of that call. No, the, this game was over, Dave. I, I mean, they've got everyone as full HP. I, I, am, I am shocked that they don't just end the game right there. They don't have to worry about this right side Phoenix at all. You can go get mid Phoenix, that's fine. It, it softens up the Titan a little bit. I understand they didn't have a wave. It just didn't matter. They had full, they had full health mage backline. They had two full health tanks. That that was a hundred percent an end for for good night. And so look, I mean, this is still this is still the type of game 
99 percenter. But while the game goes on, there is still a chance for the other team to win. And at exactly. this point, it's, you know, it's going to take a, a fire giant steal or three. But while, uh, while the, the FG is on the map and while the teams are still loaded in, there's still a chance for the game to go on. So it seems like Pandemonium's version of Nick is, the, is that kid who you think you put to bed. And they should have been asleep already. Mm. But then they were, then they're, they're just up, you know. On TikTok. Well, I mean, I'm in this in my in my brain. Nick is like a child, so mm. I hope not. But maybe I don't know. Probably they've got the little Game Boy light. You know what I mean? You the little worm light. The, yeah, the little worm light. That right. was big for me. Otherwise, yeah. you're only seeing when you're going under a street light or something, right? right. And uh, and we, we can't be having that. So maybe one more team fight gives Pandemonium a good shot here. Cherio and Ice Ice dueling it out in mid. Up in the air goes Ice Ice. Used defensively, but might be able to re-engage on this fight. Massive from Amelzi. Ice Ice in the back line, misses his stun, and Atori out damaging the jungler by far. Streak up is low here as well. Suddenly, good night, Nick. Maybe the one's going to bed. There's a second lease on life here for Pandemonium. Death Walker still wreaking havoc on the front line of this engagement, but a two for one favorable trade for Pandemonium. Both carries dead for good night, Nick. Hey man, that's a huge play for Pandemonium. That fight just got so spread out, and it seemed like good night, Nick, were, were Surprised to see Pandemonium there, maybe first and foremost, and then did not do a great job of coalescing after that information was there. I mean, Streak Up and Wolfie just get dove a little bit too easily. The Mealsy not able to help. Ice Ice, instead of being on peel duty in that fight, that maybe would have been a bit more successful, tries to make the, the, the play to go after a Tori and just was not accurate enough on that dive. That's what I'm talking about now. This should be enough time to get your left Phoenix up at the very least. Fire Giant's going to be enhanced by the time you pull it, and that makes it a little bit harder to kill. You don't have great DPS for Goodnight Nick. You don't have good secure whatsoever. Still high percentage, but I don't know if it's 99 anymore, Dave. I think we might be in 95 percent territory. 95 percenter. The, uh, the, the scale's tipping just a little bit. Yeah, that, that was a good example of the ebbs and flows, I guess, of this Thor. I mean, it's one thing if a Tori walks out of that fight and has to have used both Aegis and Beads, but Atori just simply out-traded Ice Ice after the, the stuns and all the damage missing. Fire Giant pulled from Goodnight Nick. Cherio is around the back here. On award though. Of Wolfie. Spotted out. Up in the air is Ice Ice. Has Fire Giant been reset? Don't believe so. Is the rest of Ice Ice still on there damaging it? And back down Ice Ice will dunk and no attempt at a steal or a fight from Pandemonium. Yeah, felt, felt like they wanted to, but maybe Cherio got his spidey senses tingling that he was probably on a ward. Good ward coverage from Goodnight Nick, very heads up yep. from them to know where that flank could be coming from. And with that in mind, they just decide to, to play it nice and go. safe. This does let them get their left side Phoenix up, but it didn't come up as quickly as I thought it might. I, you know, you're going to have to still have someone there. That There's two fire waves there, so you can't just clear this one and rotate over to help on these other Phoenixes as they spawn. Not sure it's the most impactful, but Pandemonium thankful that the Fire Giant was not enhanced when Goodnight Nick yep. took it down. So maybe a little bit of a different. Choxy Foxy whittled away. Cherio around the back oh and streak my. up. It's absolutely deleted. Pandemonium now can surge forward out of their base. Scarab's blessing on a Cherio, and it gets proc. So into the back he goes. Ice Ice up in the air. A chance to reset the fight. A chance to give Goodnight Nick the game here in game one. He dunks down. He finds two. And Ice Ice has struck pay dirt at the right time. Double kill for the Goodnight Nick jungler. Make it three. And finally, Goodnight Nick. We put in this game to bed. Yeah, but it took him a little longer than it maybe needed to. But overall, can't can't complain too much because Goodnight Nick just wanted to have Ice Ice have a little repeat performance there on the Thor. Give him another opportunity for a big dunk. Yeah, at this point, the only intrigue is whether Ice Ice is able to get the last two a delayed five or not. A little bit of damage onto the Titan, but going down. A bit slowly, Cherio's going to have to make a miracle play happen here, and that's just not going to happen now. Captain Odie just doesn't have the leg. Good night, Nick. Make us wait a little while. Four kills in the last fight for Ice Ice, but in 31 minutes, good night, Nick. We'll take the game, and a game that this team controlled from the onset. I mean, the, the, the story of that game is that neither frontliner died for good night, Nick, at all. Both yeah. Deathwalker and Amelzy come out of that game with zero deaths, and you just aren't beating teams that you can't kill their frontline, especially when it's a god like Sylvanas that typically we kind of have to kill in the midst of a team fight, I think that tells a lot of the story. I mean, this is, it's, a, it's a slow kill game in the sense that there's, what, like six, 20-something uh, minutes, but it was not a game without a activity. We're, we're good night, yeah. Nick. The game plan was aggressive. We're invading. We're controlling this map. 
And from start to finish, outside of a, a, a slower end call, Goodnight Nick felt in control of game number one. One win away from securing themselves third seed and advancing past the SOC contest that would be awaiting in that fourth seed spot. Can they get there? We'll take a break before we find out. That's right, the High Res Showcase, the Smite World Championship, so much more, all just around the corner, January 6th through 9th of this upcoming year. So that's, I don't know, what are we, three months away? Are you kidding? We're three months away from all that? The High Res Showcase, the World Championships, January 6th through 9th? That is 2022. That is nuts. 
That is more nuts to, to think about that. What? Has this year flown by or gone really slow? I yes. can't tell. The last, <laughs> yeah. the last two years are just this weird uh, uh, a, a mess. A, the amalgamation of, of, of weirdness. Um, yeah. So anyway, yeah, January 6th through 9th is when the High Res Showcase will be, as well as the, uh, the culmination of a fun year of competitive smites. So make sure to tune in for all of that. Uh, game number one, though, let's catch back up here. Uh, good night, Nick. You know, this one goes 30-something minutes, but we referenced how it felt like good night Nick was, was kind of in control of that game from the onset. Red buff yep. invades, purple buff invades. The, the left side of the map felt tough. Uh, Deathwalker was able to scale up on that Cthulhu, and by the time we got to team fight time and, and, and pushing time, good night Nick was in a good spot. Yeah, that game never really felt in doubt at all no. for good night Nick. They were just able to, to win nearly every single engagement. Streak up got a big lead in its duo lane, mostly because of the plays uh, from Ice Ice, just trying to set him up and, and get these consistent purple buff invades. He and Amiozi controlled this lane really, really well. Very impressed with what I saw from Goodnight Nick in this game. I thought that they were really, really clean the vast majority of it. Botched the early end call or by not going for it, in my opinion. But that's okay. You know, no harm, no foul. They get the win at the end of the day. Well, here's the highlight from Ice Ice into the mid lane. He goes. Uh, and this Thor, uh, you, you described it as dynamic. As a pick. As a pick, it's dynamic. And I think that's a good way of looking at it. Uh, but you definitely, I think, Agro, saw, saw both sides of the Thor pick here in this game where... Still very good. Ice Ice ends the game with a triple. The the fourth kill comes a little bit later on in this siege. But there were moments where the Thor dunks in, misses everything, and that gives Atori a chance to, to out-duel, doesn't have to use the actives, things like that. And so while I love to see the Thor and uh, Ice Ice far, far from a bad game on it, a, a very good game, in fact, Yeah. Uh, there still were those moments where uh, where the Thor makes you raise your eyebrows a little bit. you got to hold your breath sometimes when those team fights break out. But 6-1-7 hard to argue against that. And I think a good turnaround from Wolfie in this game. You know, th the first 10 levels or so, it really felt like uh, like the, the Raijin on the other side was going to have a decent lead, and it was going to be so difficult for, for Goodnight Nick to play around that mid lane. And then Wolfie got his feet under him. Wolfie got his feet under him. It was good play by the front line to set up Wolfie, but then he certainly delivered on the damage on the back end of that. So overall, impressed with what we saw from Goodnight Nick. I thought that this was the, the best individual game I've seen them from them this this phase, but in in my defense, I haven't watched a whole lot of their gameplay. Yep. I, I saw them last week, and I'm seeing them this week, and, and I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing this week. Improved from good night, Nick. And a good chance to take this set in two in picks and bans for game number two will take us there. So we have to look at a certain number of those picks, Agra. I think the, the jungle picks then become pretty important here. I don't know if we'll, we'll see the uh, the run back on the Thor. Cherio had moments on the, uh, the Loki where it looked good that – that assassinate into the back line, trying uh, to grab the kill on a streak up what was kind of the game plan. The Scarab's Blessing pulls you right back out. Happened like once I saw for, for Cherio in that game where, where streak up got like immediately deleted. Uh, but but Goodnight Nick was just in too good of a spot. So probably don't see much change in the first three. You see your Ardeos, you see your Odins. Um, hell as well. And it, it's kind of funny because a lot of the conversation has been around Ardeo, been around Odin, uh, you know, Uwer, things like that. Hell also has been, I don't know, what is it, 44%? I feel like it's been pick ban rate pre pretty high up here. Hell is, uh, is still in a very good spot. Yeah, it's just it's 100% of the time against players who have demonstrated that they will carry games yes. with it, and then not against the players who haven't. It's just one of those types of picks. It's interesting to me that Pandemonium has chosen to go to second pick here because they were first yeah, pick game point. one. They lose, they get their opportunity to choose. They go to second pick, and I think that's the right call. If your top pick overall is Loki – you probably don't have anything that you're valuing super highly. That You could probably get Loki top two on the return and just get another priority god alongside it instead of just only having the Loki. So I think they probably make the right call. I'm assuming that, that Good Night Nick is going to go, you know, they, they really prioritize that Tiamat, yeah. but can't do that this time around. So I, I wonder what they're going to go to this time. And I think smart from Good Night Nick then, you know, you, you leave the Tiamat open for yourself. Give yep. yourself that chance. You take away the Raijin, so there's not the return pick potential. Hmm. Uh, but it ends up being a team map ban and a Raijin ban. Uh, Cthulhu for Deathwalker. Look, Deathwalker has, has looked good on this pick. In that game, rotated in, got a couple early assists. But it was largely the team fights where he just goes big, he pops thorns, and then even if the rest of his team suffered a casualty early on, Deathwalker was in just a great spot. And so strong start for Goodnight Nick. 
But an interesting answer here from Pandemonium with the Emoja. Yeah, I didn't see this picked or banned last game. Now it's top picked by Pandemonium. I think that it does do very well up against this Cthulhu in particular because normally you think of River's Abuke as this blocking mechanism up against walls where against characters without leaps, but also really good at keeping Cthulhu locked into a small area mm -hmm. where he can't even in his ultimate go through those player made walls. So I like that pickup overall. Gives you some more dual lane pressure. That was clearly a problem for you. I'd expect Chiron Sylvanas here from Good Night Nick. I don't I don't know why you wouldn't go back to the Sylvanas unless you, you're really yeah, we'll that for him, scared of the Yemoja. Yemoja Ho Yi is much better locked down onto a character like Sylvanas, so Maybe that AoE is enough to make a go a different direction. Well, instead of the Sylvanas, it will be the Fafnir here. Fafnir was uh, the staple support pick for a while. Uh, some recent changes roll out. We've seen a little bit more diversity. Uh, but Fafnir still does the same thing he did prior to the other changes. Not necessarily that he got worse. It's that some of the other picks maybe got a little bit better. Do you like the pairing with this Chiron? I do, because it gives him a little bit of attack speed, which is something that he sometimes lacks in his builds, if, especially if he's going Mace Tree, you, you're a little low on attack speed, giving him that Coerce feels really good. And it's just a pick that Emilzy can do Emilzy things on. This is a pick that he's been very comfortable with throughout his SBL career. Now coming down to this, this SEC region, you get something that can actually get out of the Emoja wall instead of something that Sylvanas let, that would have been very, very vulnerable. And I think Pandemonium not convinced that the Chiron is, uh, is dual lane. They're going to take Uller away as well. Uh, may, you know, maybe smart. If that is even a remote possibility, just given what we've seen out of out of Uller here recently, uh, maybe you just have have to ban that pick away. So, Pandemonium hedging uh, hedging their bets, playing a little bit uh, more conservatively as far as uh, as far as their bans go here in the second wave. And then Jungler still both needing their picks here. Hun bats towards the top of that that conversation chart here as of late, and then still a Rom ban. So Pandemonium really not convinced. Uh, that this Chiron is uh, is going over in uh, in Hunter. So two different mindsets here in the second wave. Hunbats on one side, maybe another jungle ban here, and it is against Cherio, hmm. and a couple hunters on the other side. Yeah, t two things. Number one, I think it makes sense to assume it's going to be double Hunter. I believe Wolfie has played a good amount of Chiron in his career, so it makes sense that you could put him potentially mid. And secondly, I like this this option here from Pandemonium to go Merlin right off the bat coming out of the second ban phase because I think this Cabracken can flex for them into the jungle based on what we see from Good Night Nick. Cherio throughout his career has been uh, a, a lover of playing Cabracken in yeah. the jungle. Would not surprise me at all to see him take that pick into the jungle and have Good Night Nick have wasted these two extra bands yep. and then and then let their solo later take what he pleases. Bit of a chess match happening here and it is indeed Chiron mid. Chernabog will be left uh, down as the, uh, the hunter here to pair up with that Fafnir. And so that's interesting. I mean, the, the, there's still some decent mid laners available on the board. Pandemonium clearly read this situation. You, you would have loved a newer. You would have loved a Rom. You, you feeling like it's a concession? You have like you just you have to stick with this game plan. You you're surprised that Goodnight Nick didn't pivot. They stick Chiron and Duo and they get themselves a traditional mage. Or you no. still think with the Chernabog this works? I think it still works with Chernabog pretty well. I think Chernabog's good. I think that he leverages the current build well enough to warrant seeing play and and having that global pressure now you've got it with both Chernabog and with Thor that feels pretty strong it does mean that your team fight itself might be a little bit lacking but Cthulhu covers right. so much ground in that area that you maybe not don't have to worry about it a whole lot I think the good the good night Nick have come away with a pretty solid draft especially if they're able to keep up that early pressure I mean I look at pandemonium's draft Merlin okay in the early stages but not exactly who I want to be scrapping with on buff defenses in Bastet not really who I want to be scrapping with on buff defenses. So if I'm good night, Nick, I'm looking across the way and thinking, all right, I'm just I'm I'm just going to try and keep that pressure on yep. their buffs like we did in game one. We're chilling. If we're good night, Nick, you've got a game in hand and into game two. Pandemonium need to win two straight against a resurgent good night, Nick team to avoid having to, uh, to play against that SOC team. It's Dave, Agro, and Billy. It's basically working the camera for us here. It was in game one. He'll be doing the same here for us in game number two. Fantastic work from him uh, to bring us all the views, and will continue to do good work here for us in uh, in game number two. So the Bastet, I think, hmm. uh, will be intriguing here from Cherio. You know, we, we see now a couple of games with some intriguing jungle picks, and uh, the Bastet is a pick very early on in my smite career. I said, you got just damage on damage on this pick, and uh, 
think we'll, we'll get a little bit of that here out of this. Yeah, you got damage on damage, no doubt about that. I think that you're, you're looking for this pick to really put pressure onto Wolfie and streak up in particular. Really, Wolfie is the easier person to kill. Chiron, pretty easy to secure those dives onto, so I, I'd be looking for Cherio to look aggressive. Yeah, I want to know how this mid lane will, uh, will break out. It feels like uh, I've really enjoyed, watch out, streak up. Some damage from Shoxy Foxy comes out. Maybe it's watch out, Shoxy Foxy. Oh no! Disastrous start to game number two. The only thing that could be worse is Atori dying here, but I think Atori will be safe enough. That hammer connected things get real interesting. But already, Aggro, first blood over to Streak Up. Not the way you want this lane to start. Not when it's Yamoja. No, that, that Yamoja dying early does not feel particularly good. Certainly a, a, a misplay from Pandemonium, who, who were off to a good start on the poke department, but. We're taking a minion wave. That that those Chernobog autos start to add up pretty quickly. Remember, his passive means that he gets extra damage as he hits his third auto on the same target. Not not something we talk about that often, but starts to starts to add up pretty quickly, even yep. in the early stages of the game. Now I do wonder. I mean, it's always a question that I think is worth asking. When when you go double hunter, you're uh, you're getting a lot of physical damage there, and a lot of physical damage connecting on a streak up here, Tori. Dives in, Riptide dodged out from Streak Up, but the last auto attack is in. It is chaos in the duo lane. And Atori is able to answer back with a big kill here. Ice Ice has rotated over to left, but there is no Streak Up in lane right now. Stun in, but a great double stun from Shoxy Foxy. Double tap hits once, but does not hit twice. And Mulesy oh. dunking under the tower as well, but Atori uh, will survive. And a good attempt from Ice Ice, but comes up just short. Ice Ice didn't put a point in the wall, I don't think. Must have had two points in either the Hammer or the Berserker's Barrage, so didn't have it to stun Atori, but Atori held the beads uh, very patiently in that moment. I think that they, they did it pretty yep. well. Good night, Nick. I don't think that I saw a whole lot that could have gone a whole lot differently for them. Just ends up being just short on the damage department. A bit unfortunate there. Yeah, Shoxy Foxy with that double stun. Uh, maybe the biggest turn. Yep. There in that in that uh, in that little fight probably goes worse for Pandemonium, but a good play. Then you have to rewind. Not only that last skirmish, but Tori was able to to get a, a return kill on a streak up. That's even that lane right back up, and it looks like we will get a bit of a different start once the healing potion uh, heads on out. Yeah, it looks like still will be transcendence over there for a Tori and streak up into the crusher. So sticking with our uh, our build paths from game one. Yeah, I think that the transcendence makes a lot more sense on Ho Yi. He, he leverages that scaling a lot better than someone like Jing Wei. So I like that build just fine for Tori. Chernabog with crusher. I mean, you're, you've got three abilities that will apply it technically uh, in, in your one, two, and three. Um, actually, I wonder if the two does apply it. I'm pretty sure that's just considered an auto attack. So I'm not actually sure if your two will apply crusher or not but you'll be able to consistently apply with the one. Oh, great Riptide from Shoxy Foxy. Oh. And the stun on the other end. It's Redwell and Streak Up. Now under some pressure from Pandemonium. Great read there from both Shoxy Foxy and Atori. So the Chernabog will get his back delayed. And that is just obnoxious. And you're going to have to stick around. This wave is about to reach your tower as well. Good night, Nick. Send Ice Ice and Wolfie. I was wondering what rotation Oof. they might be looking for here. That ricochet nearly hits as well. Streak Up is just having a hell of a time getting back to base right now. And Mules even used the sprint. And here's some pressure for you. You get to see Yamoja, and this is what you want Yamoja to do. Exactly. Try and bully out the opposite lane. Keep your ADC healthy. Uh, is Shoxy Foxy doing a very good job of both of those aspects of the Emoja laning phase. So much better so far for Pandemonium. They're going to be able to defend their buffs on this left-hand side much more easily. And so the question becomes for Good Night Nick, what's the game plan? You know, how, how do we adjust from what we did in the last game? How, how do we make sure that we're still being aggressive with, uh, with this composition? I think they can still be aggressive with this composition. But but they have to be a little, you know, it's a, it's harder to find your windows whenever you don't just have guaranteed yep. pressure in duo. Now, I do want to return to a point that uh, I wasn't able to bring up earlier. And I always like asking it when you when you go double hunter and you still have an assassin in the jungle. I mean, you're, you're, you're lopsided on physical damage, it feels like, right? I mean, oh, yeah. is, there, is there enough damage from Deathwalker? I mean, it looks like Voidstone will be his first option here. You already got a sovereignty for Shoxy Foxy. Is... 
Too much physical damage, a concern. Not enough magical, magical damage, you think, something that Pandemonium can itemize against. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I mean, you already see the, the sovereignty there, but Ice Ice looking solo. Good dunk on the Captain Odie. Good wall as well. Ice Ice hits everything here. And Deathwalker will follow up with the CC, follow up with the damage. And we'll get some pressure over on right. And another kill for Goodnight Nick. Yeah, it's the Mogal build, the, the Bancroft's Talon. Right off the rip over here in Solo Lane, and uh, you sound exasperated. You, that's what was that a, a slight exhale I hear, a, a sigh. Well, that's just what should happen to that right. to that build all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. Lots of damage in on a Joshi nice. and Wolfie will deal the final blow. Cherio is here in the mid lane as well. Can you jump onto Ice Ice? Looks like Ice Ice will have the range to get on out, and he will. And a well calculated dive from Goodnight Nick. The Thor starting to get a little bit more active. This is exactly when you start to see where you start to saw where you started. That, that's the word that was not past tense yet. I had to fix that in that sentence. Started to see Goodnight Nick take control of game one. Yeah, th this is uh, this is exactly what we saw from Ice Ice in game number one, being active across the map. And, and like I was about to say, I mean, every time we see this Mogal build of Bancroft's first, I'm just like, where is the jungler? Because this is just, I mean, it's so free on these gangs. It is so easy to kill this Cabracken. And, and if I'm Ice Ice, my ultimate's already almost back up. Uh, you know where I'm going, Dave? I'm going solo. So you're um, going to the solo lane? And I'm, gonna, and I'm just going to stun him. Uh, and then we're going to kill him. Then you're going to kill him. And now Ice Ice uh, was able to get some more gold, some more damage online. So it might be easy. Ice Ice is on the right side of the map, but not in any sort of clandestine way. He's just chilling in lane, clearing things out. Blue buff is back up, and so Cherio's over on right as well. This is going to maybe be the biggest pivot point. We're streak up even in levels with the Tori, but still all the pressure has been pushing up against streak up. That said, the the kind of ace up his sleeve, the uh, the ability to rotate into these fights is where streak up can maybe start to set apart that lane. I think that, yeah, he he's just got to try and wait for his opportunities in this lane, right? Because Tori has the the much better one v one potential theoretically, though yep. he is behind in itemization in the sense that his transcendence with 20 stacks is worth less than Crusher for streak up right now. But Chernobog has an ultimate that is going to impact the rest of the map. But Tori has an ultimate that's going to help him solo kill. Wow, you know, we might see a scrap here, aggro. Dunk in from Ice Ice. Cherio uses the beads to avoid the stun. And out and away goes Ice Ice. Cherio put a lot of damage back into the jungler. Cherio back up and over. And the snipes from Wolfie are good. You don't need it to escape death. When you're dealing death to the enemy's team instead, big ultimate out of Deathwalker now. This rest of Goodnight Nick will chase down Pandemonium. Yeah, this is a view we want to see. We want to see the rain of Hellfire from Deathwalker. He doesn't have a lot of mana left in this fight, but the collapse in from the rest of Goodnight Nick is great, and Wolfie's on a killing spree. But Captain Odie's finally arrived. Oh, no. Does not get enough in order to make it work. Nice Blink Whoa. from Ice Ice on the back end. Nearly found the hammer onto a Tori to kill him as well. So impressive stuff from him. Captain Odie is not able to make it work. But <laughs> now that CC chain onto a Mealzy is going to be death. Oh, no. Mealzy was just kind of left alone to his own devices there. And a Tori able to get back a return kill. So far from detrimental for Goodnight Nick. But uh, ideally, you're not handing one back to uh, the 2-0 and now, Ho Yi. Yeah. But still the, 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 the great opportunity, actually. A bit of a dip down there towards the end uh, for uh, for Pandemonium, despite Goodnight Nick finding the opening couple of kills in the Golden XP department. Uh, the good news is, though, is Wolfie now off to a great start. He's 3-0 and on this Chiron, and it's been looking good in the fights. And Chiron, when he gets ahead, is so much fun to play because you just get to play like an absolute maniac in the yep. mid lane. Like, Joshi, you can just dash on him. Uh, if you know where the jungler is, you can just, you can just use your dash – Get in his face, try and make a play happen because if you land your one, if you land an auto attack or land your one, I mean he's My half God, health. He's half health. That. that is absurd. Is Wolfie's got to hit him all here, but even just giving yourself the chance is going to make Joshy think twice about hanging out in this lane. That is annoying for Joshy to say the least. Wolfie in a, a great position here, transcendence fully stacked, massive power spike for the mid laner of uh, of Goodnight Nick. So Ice Ice's ultimate. Literally down just now. Wondered if we would see it off of cooldown. Um, maybe used it to close gap over here towards the mid lane. Haven't seen that return pressure, which is why I bring that up over on the right side of the map. Captain Odie able to get a couple tiers in his next item and said maybe it's Deathwalker that receives eyes from the enemy jungler. Root is in. Ice Ice still here on left, though. Looks like Pandemonium know that not all is well. And uh, Captain Odie's ward will spot out the Thor. 
Yeah, a good wall to make sure that Odie can't close the gap, even though Ice Ice has used that hammer already. I mean, it's Good Night Nick again being really aggressive in a good way. Well, Wolfie stands in a lot of the damage there from Joshi. River's Rebuke is up from Shoxy Fox. It's going to be a tough route for Wolfie. He'll cleanse himself, but you can't cleanse damage. Cherio now on the board for the first time this game. Damage in from Streak Up, though. Makes this fight interesting. Emilzi nice. chases the Tori over the wall, and a wall on the other side from Ice Ice as well. We'll even up the the kills here in this mid skirmish. Ooh, that was a really nice stun from Emilzi, but Ice Ice was right there with the perfect follow up at the exact same time. Nice chase down from them, and a good collapse on the has people his ult. who killed him. Almost has his ult, does Ice Ice. Getting close, three quarters of the way there. Emilzi tanking up this tier one tower. Riptide will pull him back into range. Captain Odie over here on left as well. Ice Ice. Does get his ultimate back up, but it looks like Anvil of Dawn won't be necessary as both teams have disengaged. One for one trade, though. And despite Goodnight Nick driving a lot of the pressure, this gold lead definitely not out of control. No, they, they've they been able to keep it close, have Pandemonium they, with some with some good plays. I mean, that pick on a Wolfie was huge. Shoxy Foxy's ultimate, not perfect by any means. Kind of kind of a little rushed, I think, in order to just make sure that Wolfie was, was forced to use his dash, but at the end of the day, it works out. You know, he does use that dash, and Cherio's got a really good angle on cutting him off. Pandemonium definitely looking a little bit stronger this time around. <laughs> is one of the, I think, here's my take. One of the funniest animations in game is Kabrakin desperately trying to find a stun with, uh, with those auto attacks. Yeah, we call those walrus hands. Walrus hands? Yeah, because, you know, it's like walrus is like clapping. Oh, not because he's got walls on his hands? No, that actually has nothing to do with it, but that's that's pretty uh, fortuitous, I would say. Sorry, every, I feel like every seals that clap. Do walruses clap too? Seals are definitely the ones that they're like they're in the same clapping. they're in the same family as one another. So we're 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 not are far they? off. One where they got they have to they be related. They look so similar. Right, so they have to be related. But sometimes think. they just aren't. Like you know that's what true. I mean? It's right. I mean, like you look at you look at Chris Hemsworth and I, and you assume these guys are related. But <laughs> right. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. Fantastic. Well, while you uh, while you do some research for us, we'll talk about Goodnight Nick and how they are on the Gold Fury now. And this will be a nice little gold spike for the Order side team. Had been close in the Gold Department, still is. But now you you start to get to that 2K lead, and that's when Game One. Not out of reach. That's not the right word. But but started to feel a lot more difficult for this Pandemonium team was when Goodnight Nick were able to start controlling the game with this little bit of a lead here. Ultimate is out from a Tori. Gets a teeny bit of damage on a streak up, and the arrow won't reach out for that much damage either. Ice Ice a little bit telegraphed on uh, on his intentions there. Looked like he ulted in, and a Tori had to use the beads, and so maybe a worthwhile rotation to left, even without the kill for Ice Ice. Yeah, I mean, you, you get a little bit for it, and, and streak up at Emil's. He can probably make a play happen based on those beads being on cooldown. Certainly Emilzi who's been who's been awfully aggressive this game with his jumps in, but different in the sense that in the last game it was Shoxy Foxy who was pretty far behind, Emilzi very far ahead and was uh, able to kind of play with that reckless abandon. Emilzi's actually been punished for it once this game and he's built Divine Ruin as his second yeah. item. So he's going to be pretty squishy in these fights. This is, this is smart though because one of the things that could be problematic for a double hunter composition is that you, you have less access to anti-heal options, Divine Ruin being one of them. But now whenever he coerces someone, they'll have Divine Ruin uh, as a passive, which which will be really good for their yep. ability. So you, with the Brawlers and Divine, if Wolfie is coerced, then he's going to 80% anti-heal Shoxy Foxy and the rest of Pandemonium all by himself. Yep. And helps out a little bit in the physical V magical damage department. Shoxy Foxy throws up the river's rebuke. Wolfie dashes on away. Emilzi chasing in Shoxy Foxy here. Ice Ice does have the Anvil of Dawn. If you want to take this 4v4, both soul laners over on the other side of the map. A nice little chunk of damage finds its way to Cherio there at the end. So Cherio will disengage on this one. Deathwalker rotating towards mid. But it looks like he'll head right on back to right. Stone of Binding. Or, uh, or, is it the stone of my, why am I blind right now? Um, either way, stone in there for Captain Odie on the stone end. Stone of, of fall. Yeah, stone of fall. Yeah, right. That's, that's fall stone. Of stone. Fall. We're in fall. I don't know why. It's one of those that, like, it just escapes you. You just, you, yeah. you just forget a word. Um, but Captain Odie's got it here. Maybe a little extra uh, in that lane for him. Ice Ice up in the end. <laughs> <We've done. laughs> Something about, uh, Tori waiting to see when Ice Ice would drop down. Uh, Bead's still down for 25 seconds. He had a window of opportunity there for Ice Ice, so why not take the chance? 
why not take the chance, but ends up being heard, I believe, by Atori or by someone on Pandemonium who then relayed it to Atori because he was a little bit out of range. He would have needed to, to walk forward a tiny bit in order to be in Ice Ice's range, um, but clearly pretty privy to what was going on there. So Streak Up and Atori, I, I like following along with these Hunter builds because they ended up being somewhat similar in Game 1 uh, with, uh, with Crit coming in a little bit later after the Aussie. It looks like going to be the same here. So Crusher, Aussie, and then Crit. We saw a Spectral Armor prioritized once or twice, but with Crit being uh, potentially equally probable for both of these Hunters right now, maybe it's something we have to see the Frontliners start to consider at some point. We haven't seen much, speaking of the Hunters, out of uh, the rotation through from Streak Up. You use the no. ultimate, you jump into these fights. Hasn't really had that opportunity. No, not yet. A, a lot of these fights have been pretty local to the left side of the map, and that's what you want to do up against a global ultimates like this, is you want to actually take the fight to them. You know, you want to fight in an Athena's lane or in a Turnabog's lane, because then their ultimate gets a lot less value in turning the tides when it comes to numbers. Plus, the way that the solo lane has been going, Pandemonium probably don't want to be fighting over there. It's a pretty significant lead for Death. Well, maybe this is where Streak Up joins the fight. Fight breaking out now on the right side of the mid lane. Oh, Ice Ice not able to get up in the sky. Cheerio puts him down quickly. Streak Up has rotated through. There's going to be some big damage on the back end of this. Death Walker beneath the tier one tower in mid. Two kills answered back from Goodnight Nick. Could get a lot worse here as Joshi stood on by the Cthulhu, Aegis times out, and Deathwalker's got a double. Nowhere for him to go, and Captain Odie again late to this rotation, just uses beads and walks away. Oh That's God. all he was able to contribute to that fight. Deathwalker just too much to handle out of the soul lane. Right I wonder now. how far Goodnight Nick pushed this, because this is what we saw in game one, remember, where there was kind yeah. of one scrap, and then a tier one, a tier two, and a Phoenix all fall in conjunction with one another. If you get a kill on a Captain Odie here, what? which are not able to get cleanly, Wolfie dies. And so there's a little bit less push potential now. Atori wants to keep going. He is on his own. Shoxy Foxy ripped hiding back from base and realizing that Goodnight Nick will turn tail. Man, Atori, no fear whatsoever. It had both his relics, so was able to play awfully aggressively. But a good turnaround kill to get Wolfie, that, that actually matters quite a bit. Yep. Because I, I think you're right. If they are able to keep some pressure on, maybe stop Atori, though Ice Ice is back. Ice Ice trying to stop Atori. Dunk oh, good. Wall it. good. Hammer no good. And so Atori will head on out. Some healing from Shoxy Foxy will top off that health bar. Primal Fury here at the perfect time for Pandemonium. Amilzy walks in. Hammer shouldn't steal away Primal Fury, and Hammer won't. Can Ice Ice make something happen? How about that? Yes, hammer? he can. That hammer's good. And Ice Ice steals it away. Yeah, one hammer better than the other, uh, both in terms of accuracy <laughs> and in terms of damage. And Ice Ice makes it happen with the Mjolnir's attunement. Beautiful steal coming from Ice Ice, who continues to, to make big, big plays on this Thor. And Ice Ice now at 114. I don't think the KDA does him justice. Nice double stun, double tap. Really, the story's got to be uh, Deathwalker. Maybe the story's this 1v1. Streak up in a Tori, brawling it out. Nice. nice dodge of the arrow. Aegis used early from a Tori, but Wolfie's going to ruin the party. Makes it the 2v1, and Streak up nabs that kill. And so now a great opportunity to push in this left side. But I think, Aggro, the story's got to be around Deathwalker here, 305. But we'll get to return to the previous headline of the uh, the steal here on the Primal. Yeah, has that extra Doink. damage coming from the Coerce. You know, maybe Emilzy did uh, make it happen a little bit there with the Coerce right That's on time. Right. But really, uh, really, really well played. Pandemonium, they're, they're taking a risk. You know, that's a weighted coin flip in their favor. But it's not a it's not a totally rigged flip. They, they, they still have to hope that it falls on their side, and it just doesn't. And Pyromancer is the objective now for Goodnight Nick. Fire Giant. Over on the right of uh, of his little brother here, and that's something. Good night, Nick. Now maybe far enough ahead to consider. I mean, you're six, nearly seven k gold in the lead. You got a coerce with double hunter. You'll be able to do that objective quickly. Uh, but wanting to make sure that they close this game out smartly are the rest of Good Night, Nick. We've seen flashes from this Bastet here. Agro Cherio has gotten some uh, some nice damage in once or twice but definitely hasn't had the effectiveness that uh, Pandemonium were hoping for. No, not quite yet. I mean, got that one burst damage kill onto Ice Ice, and, and Bass, that's a pick that scales throughout the game. You know, you, you don't, don't feel like you're getting weaker, really, at any point. You continue to only get stronger. So maybe Cherio, as he finishes off uh, Titan's Bane, which is what I'd assume he's going with that fourth item, he, he can start to make something happen. 
uh, in that way and, and maybe really one-shot Wolfie or one-shot Ice Ice in these yep. fights before they start to, to snowball the game too much. This is, interest this is interesting territory for Pandemonium because Fire Giant... I mean, it could really just end the game effectively if Goodnight Nick get this one cleanly. So do you step up? That's the question. Terrio jumps in. He's looking for Ice Eyes. He'll get some damage onto him, but Terrio takes a lot He's more dead. in return. The Execute didn't reach its target because Deathwalker did the damage in the meantime. Double already from the Cthulhu. And so, yes, Pandemonium will show up, but they will die. They will They will lose two, and they weren't there in force. The, a, a Tori wasn't there, and he's been the whole win condition so far for Pandemonium. He's top player damage in the entire game. And without him there, Pandemonium just isn't going to have enough in the tank. Joshi has been unable to, to be a factor in this game because of this Cthulhu. Cthulhu versus Merlin is not a matchup that Merlin likes very much. That it, You just don't have any tools to handle that Cthulhu ultimate. And once that starts to happen, I mean, we saw that, that one dive from Deathwalker underneath the Tier 1 where Joshi's just on the run and has no options. He still has only 10% pen in the build. It's it's going to be a bit before Joshi is actually going to be able to threaten Deathwalker. So they need a Tori yeah. there. And without him there, that means an easy fire giant. I think the uh, the difference in this game is has kind of stood out in the solo lane there as well. Captain Odie on the Kubrakan. Uh, fallen by the wayside, to say the least here. Though, always have that opportunity. You blink in, you find a stun. Maybe some things get interesting, but haven't seen that on a consistent basis, if at all, here just yet. And what's worse is you got a full three minutes left on this Fire Giant buff, and there's only one tower left on the Pandemonium side of the map. Should see a Phoenix Siege in some regard here from Goodnight Nick, but I think it's it, it's kind of shades of game one here, Aggro, where Pandemonium, under their Phoenix, you know, they, they scrapped a little bit, but they're so far behind at this point, I'm not sure even the Phoenix is feeling comfortable. Yeah, they, they've got good defense again. I mean, Hoi Ultimate will stop uh, a Siege for a wave. Merlin damage over the wall is threatening to you. Um, but I agree that I think the Goodnight Nick are just so far ahead at this point that even Pandemonium's good tools might not be enough. Well, we get another two and a half minutes of this with three exposed Phoenixes. Deathwalker doesn't want to wait. Ice Ice does not want to wait. Up in the air is the Anvil of Dawn. And down on the ground, it crashes, and it's in the back line, and it's on Joshi. And the Merlin MIA for the next 50 Ooh. seconds. Wolfie deletes Cheerio. Pandemonium crumbling under the weight, under the damage of Deathwalker and the rest of Goodnight Nick. There's still a Phoenix back here, fellas, but we're not worried about it. Goodnight Nick, all right, Pandemonium are starting to crumble here under their base. Yeah, yeah this is just easy pickings now for Goodnight Nick. They have shattered Pandemonium's hopes of bringing the third seed. Oh, Goodnight Nick aren't going to delay this one out. They're going to head into the Titan Room. Atori is still there, but the leap away actually will get one onto Wolfie, but I don't think that's enough here, Agro. Atori's no. going to have to make magic happen, and it looks like the deck of cards is empty. Amulesy gets taken out by the Titan, but the Titan will get taken out by Goodnight Nick, who stamped themselves as the third seed here in EU. And with emphatic fashion, by the yep. way. I mean, this set was not close. Goodnight Nick really dominates Pandemonium in this set, solidifies themselves as the top three team in the EU SCC, and makes sure that they aren't going to have to worry about playing that top SOC team in order to make it to land. And this is, this is always what's so important, even in a game, and this game was, again, important, as we've talked about yep. with seeding. The last look at these teams is always our – that's our metric on, on when we when we have discussions, when we have talking points on, all right, the land is coming up. How do we feel about these teams? We only have the last, you know, couple of games to look at, and Goodnight Nick look good. So I imagine yep. a lot of the talking about this Goodnight Nick team leading up into that big event will be that Goodnight Nick. All right, uh, scary-looking team here over in the EU SEC. 2-0 for Goodnight Nick in our first set of the day. We'll take a break. When we come back, Agro and I will break it down.
of a couple convincing games. Good night, Nick. Take the 2-0 over Pandemonium and secure themselves as third seed here in the EU SEC. And, and this was a, a great look at a good night, Nick team. As Agro joins me to break down game number two. Wow, you were proud of that one, huh? Did you see the smile? I, <laughs> I saw that there was light behind your eyes for was, the first time today. Oh, yeah, a lot better than what I the joke I texted you earlier. Oh, it was uh, horrendous. It was horrendous, bad. and we can't even talk about it on camera, no. which uh, which really stinks. Um, but the 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 pacing of this game, e even game one that went a little bit longer than than game two did. The, the pacing felt very similar to what we saw in Game 1, where, you know, there, there was a couple answer backs from Pandemonium that didn't happen in, in Game 1. But even still, you know, it, it feels like a multi-headed monster to deal with in Goodnight Nick. If it wasn't Streak Up, it was Wolfie. It wasn't either of those two, it was Ice Ice. And then you can't forget Deathwalker on this Cthulhu, who uh, really ran things. Yeah, look, I mean, it, it was it was just domination from Goodnight Nick from Minute 1. Wolfie got off to a great start. Ice Ice was active on the map once again. Uh, Emil Z wasn't super accurate in this game with the hammers, but still was able to, to find some really nice long range stuns from the ultimate jump. Uh, he had a couple really but this good hammer. ones there, but this hammer uh, <laughs> ended up being pretty good. There had to get one more in there. Yeah, the, had to get one more in there. I don't blame you. And then of course, Deathwalker was just completely unstoppable. So yeah. all those things combined means that it is uh, a kind of an easy picket for Good Night Nick and to get themselves some nice momentum heading into the to, to the land. 608 for Deathwalker on the Cthulhu. Uh, did he die this set? I don't he, he did not. No, he went on dying. Uh, also, I know that people probably were wondering, so I did look it up uh, oh, during yeah. the break. Uh, both walruses, sea lions, and seals, so all three of those are pinnipeds. That's according to the Smithsonian. That sounds cute. Yeah, they're pinnipeds. Got and it. of course, so walruses are, are, are very different, though, because they're much bigger. Right. You know, they're pinnipeds, and they've got the, the big tusks. So it is like me and Chris Hemsworth, where we're all related, but one of the two of us is bigger than the other. And we all yes. know which one I'm talking about. Right. All of us are on the same page. On we're all on the same about. page. Yes. That one of you is bigger. <laughs> right. One, one of the two of right. us is. We, none of us need to say it, because we all know. One of the two of us is bigger. And Correct. We all yeah, know. we're all on the same page. Yeah, we <laughs> said it four times now, Dave. <laughs> That's a good thing, Nick. We'll see uh, who now uh, tops the standings. We know who is the top of the standings. Elysium, Team Joystick, Good Night Nick, and Pandemonium. Those are your top four. We are locked in to those spots. Uh, maybe, actually, I don't think there's really any shifting. Maybe Good Night Nick, or Team Joystick, rather, could, uh, could jump up on top of Elysium. Depending. I don't think they play each other. Yeah, I don't think they play one another. So... Elysium, uh, the, the team that you're going to have your money on over Just F6. Just F6 has, has struggled so far in the EU STC. Uh, Snake Hunters have as well. Those are two games, again, if you want to talk about confidence, in our, in our confidence in these teams going into the next LAN, Elysium and Team Joystick should win those two matchups convincingly. Team Joystick should be second. Elysium then would be uh, would be first place. A couple good NA matchups. Herculean Hooves, t Barone, Sleekness, Sturdy Artisans. There's, there's a lot of drama in NA as well, yeah. Agro. I mean, EU, a little bit more solidified after this matchup. NA still feels like any given week these teams can take their games. Excited to see what the Hoofs are going to do. I mean, there's a team that has been on the rise, but, you know, it's all about being uh, on the same page there. And, Dave, just so we're on the same page, you know what the, the Hoof and Herculean Hoof stands for, right? No. Who farted? We're going to break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 